Kirebe, where are you, Kirill? We are about to talk about heroes and abilities. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I am already. Battle for Geostone heroes and abilities. Last time we talked about something, you know, all of the history behind MOBAs, everything related to Battle for Geostone, all of the things that make us unique. Time to go into a deep dive. So now we're just going into free fall, diving into a pool of knowledge about heroes and abilities related to battle for Geostone. So the first thing is six hero classes, 72 abilities. 3.5 million combinations out of it. So the six hero classes in battle for Geostone are ranged wizard, melee wizard, ranged warrior, melee warrior, ranged assassin, assassin. and melee assassin. Assassin. <laughs> So, you can check out all of the characters, they have all their stats uh, on the Battle for Geostone websites. Some of them are strong in strength, some of them are great in agility, and some of them are great at intelligence. And depending on the type or the character you want to play, you can pick 4 abilities out of the total 72. So all of those abilities go into slots. The interesting thing about Battle for Geostone is that all of those abilities work like pieces of equipment. First slot corresponds with your arm. The second slot corresponds with your legs. I cannot show you my, uh, how is it called? Leg legs. muscles. <laughs> <laughs> the third part corresponds with your torso and the fourth part corresponds with your head. That's the main thing. So all of those pieces of equipment are pretty great. They look different and they make your hero look completely unique. So out of all of those three and a half million combinations, Let's say we have the same three abilities. So arms, legs, torso, they're the same, but head is different. Completely different heroes, completely different play style, everything's different. As you can see here, we have... What arms. Was the, no, this is Eternal Blast. Eternal Blast, they have legs, and here's the arm, I mean the head, and torso non-existent at the moment. Of course that they have legs. Every they have legs. Our <laughs> heroes have legs. <laughs> Nice. So, going a bit deeper, all of the heroes, I mean the hero classes themselves, will have skins. The same thing goes for abilities. So the piece of equipment can look different, it can have different colors, and plus the in-game ability can look completely unique. Let's say if you have a flame, the flame can be red, orange, pretty much like everybody knows. It, it. depends on the black, skin, black, yeah. If you watch Naruto, like Amaterasu, they have it and boom, black flames. Amaterasu. <laughs> everything can happen. So, apart from that, in regards to the abilities, you get to choose where each ability goes for your ideal champion. So you can create a ranged hero with close tactics, maybe a melee hero with uh, abilities that allow you to be ranged, supports, tanks, assassins, warriors, pretty much everything. Every hero class that you can imagine that's already existent in mobile games, you can create it. Literally everything. Another thing that's very important about heroes and abilities is the mechanism of, I mean, the free-to-play mechanism. There will be 10 free heroes that will rotate in Battle for Geostone each week. So let's say you're playing League of Legends. You have a couple of heroes open and then you need to buy a hero in order to unlock it, play it at rank, play, play it at classic, play it pretty much Mobile everywhere. Legends like that? Yes, Mobile ah. Legends is the same way. Same way. So you get to, you know, bundle up a lot of tokens and then you can buy a new hero. So in this case, it's not gonna be specific heroes, it can be forging. You can forge your ideal champion. So the forging mechanism is very interesting too. Every ability that you pick, that you want your hero to have, will have a specific percentage of spawning when you decide to forge your hero. So even if you decide to get all four, there is still a small chance of randomization. Yeah. And the important thing about the free-to-play mechanism is that players will be able to try out the game. They will be able to play uh, classic, rank, pretty much everything, even climb the leaderboards, receive rewards from the leaderboards and claim them. Because all it takes is skill. I mean, Battle for Geostone is a game rewarding people. Don't for it. They will be able to compete in esports events also. Yes, esports events are massive. We are always up for esports events. That's where the hero creation process will shine. So, here are a few examples. When we hosted the first Battle for Geostone tournament, I mean, it was the second one actually. The second With one. the 16 teams? Yes. Second one. The second tournament in Battle for Geostone, we saw a lot of things. I mean, we are creating the game, but still, the players themselves create combinations that are absolutely amazing. So the Dragon Geo specifically, 
is created to be tough to beat. So it needs five people to attack it in order to be the, for the Geostorm to be claimed. However, in the case of the tournament, one of the players figured out a way to defeat the dragon solo. So they soloed the dragon, plus they came at a specific time to defeat it before it spawns again. So they got two Geostones in a relatively short period of time. Now that the Primal Geostone League is preparing, we are gonna see a lot more of those. And in a team fight, if everybody chooses to be a damage type hero, somebody who has a lot of stuns, they can dominate them. I mean, we were playing a couple of games, we had a lot of damage, we lost. So that's it in regards of abilities and heroes. There's a lot more to come, so make sure you tune in again next week where we dive deep into why we chose to limit the time to 30 minutes. And if you haven't watched it already, you can watch the previous video on the history of MOBAs and why we decided to make this game in the first place.